Okay guys, it's time to talk about Instant ID. By now you know that I am the developer of the ConfUI IP adapter extension and now also of the Instant ID one. Instant ID is a style transfer model targeted to people's portraits. Uh, be careful because there are many Instant ID extensions in, in the manager, but mine is the only native one, meaning that it is fully integrated into the ConfUI ecosystem. Uh, let's see how it works. So first of all, Instant ID is SDXL only at the moment. So uh, let me grab an SDXL checkpoint, set the resolution to 1024 by 1024 and change a few parameters to the case sampler. As per the prompt, I want to do a Renaissance oil painting of a woman with brown hair sitting on a chair and some negatives. This is what we get with this checkpoint. Okay, now we need the apply instant ID node. Uh, please note that instant ID is actually a control net augmented by a face ID model. Uh, so we need the instant ID model, inside face for the feature extraction and the control net model. Next, the reference image. Remember with inside face, the face uh, must reside inside a 640 by 640 box, uh, but the whole picture needs to be bigger. In this image, the face is inside a 640 box, but uh, we have more context around. Next, I connect the model pipeline, and since this is a control net, we also need the positive and negative. Since there is a lot of conditioning going on, the CFG needs to be lowered uh, drastically, so I'm trying with 4.5 and let's see how it goes. So it kind of worked, but uh, the resemblance is not great. To improve that, we can try to send multiple reference images. I add a batch image node and I'll try to send three pictures. Let's see. Did we actually improve anything? Well, it's hard to say. Our brain is really bad at face recognition with strangers, uh, but I made a node that uh, will help us understand how the modifications that we make actually impact the image generation. So I'm adding a face embeds distance node. For the analysis model, I'm using insight face and connect the three reference pictures and the generated image. This node exports the image with an overlay containing two numbers. The lower the number, the better the likeliness. For this image, we got a 0.86, which is pretty high. Uh, but how do I know what is a good value? Well, we can send one of the reference images together with a generated one with a batch node and check again. So now we know that a value of 0.41 Euclidean and 0.08 cosine are good. Okay, let's try to improve our score. First of all, we can try to increase the instant ID weight to 0.9. And indeed the numbers are a little lower now, uh, meaning that we are getting closer. Another thing that we can try is to add an IP adapter phase model. So I'm adding an apply IP adapter node for the model, I choose plus face XDXL and I also need the clip vision. Now, for the reference image, I need to cut Rosario's head very close to the frame because the plus face model uh, doesn't like having context around the face, uh, contrary to inside face. I'm using an image crop node to cut the first reference to an ideal size, like so. Then I pass it through a prep image for clip vision and then to the IP adapter. Now we need a very light conditioning, so I'm setting the weight to 0.6 and the end at value at 0.3. So this will only influence the generation at the very beginning. Then I connect the model pipeline and lower the CFG even further. And I think we are ready to go. Ah, oh, very nice jacket, where did you get it? Okay, we definitely increased the likeness, but we also lost most of the painting style that kinda defeat the purpose of Instant ID. Fortunately, we've got attention masking. So I copied the generated image, passed it into a load image node and draw a mask around the face. Now I connect this to the IP adapter mask and we try again. 
Okay, now we've got our painting style back and increase the likeliness to the reference. Anyway, don't stress too much about these numbers. Uh, remember that Instant ID is for applying heavy styling uh, to a person. There are far better models if uh, I wanted a photorealistic result. But with Instant ID, it's very simple to make small changes like I can make her blonde or red. And you can also increase the likeliness by giving the checkpoint a little more context. For example, I believe Dozon is half a Puerto Rican, uh, so we can try to add that to the prompt. And in fact, we gained another few point. Now let me try to generate four images and we've got a very nice 0.6 result. Okay, now this is cool, but it doesn't really look like a Renaissance painting. Let's try to teach some art history to this model. To do that, yeah, we are using another IP adapter. For the model I pick the plus XDXL, I can reuse the clip vision, and for the reference, what better than the Mona Lisa? For the weight, let's try 0.6, connect the model pipeline, and we are ready to test it. And now it's certainly more Leonardesque. Since now we have really a lot of conditioning, it's time to add a rescale CFG node. The image is a little oversaturated and this node will take care of that. As you can see, the colors are a bit more natural now. Okay, with another IP adapter, though, we lost some likeliness. We are again over 0.8. We already have the mask for the face. We can invert that and send it to the attention mask of the second IP adapter. That way the face will be conditioned only by the face models and not the Mona Lisa. Indeed, we are much closer, but we also lost some of the style on the face that now looks a little out of place. And of course, we can also fix that. Remember that the mask is not a one bit, but a grayscale. If I connect the mask preview, you see that it's black and white. The black area is ignored. So I create a solid mask with a value of 0.5, the same size of the latent, and then with a mask composite, I merge it with an inverted mask. If I preview this, the black is now a 50% gray, which means the embed strength will be halved and not completely zeroed. I can send the new mask to the IP adapter and check the result. And finally, this is a very decent picture. She also has a nice Mona Lisa smile. I can now generate four of them. But again, don't take these numbers too seriously. They are just an indication. Always trust your gut. Okay, let's start anew with a default workflow. This time I want to create a comic book character. So I have comic book character, graphic illustration, and so on in the prompt. Let's see the result. Okay, this is pretty good. Now let's try with four results. You probably noticed that in all results, the character is in the same position. There's not much variation. Remember that this is a control net and as such is controlled by a reference image. In this case, the head position is determined by our main reference, but we can use this image only for the facial features and a different one for the pose. I need another load image node. I change the photo to something completely different like this one. And I connect it to the image KPS input. KPS stands for key points. Since the pose is in a different aspect ratio, I'm also changing the latent size. If I generate now, I get the features of the first image, but the pose of the second. It's important to note that only the head position is considered. The control net ignores the body. Let me show you. I have a face K point uh, preprocessor node. I connect the image, the inside face model, and a preview. And this is exactly what Instant ID sees. The key points represent the nose, the eyes, and the jawline, but there's nothing about the body. For that, we can add a second control net. SDXL control nets kinda suck, especially open pose, but depth is usually okay. So I need a control net advanced apply node, connect the positive and the negative. For the model, I select depth, 
Uh, then I need a preprocessor. I'll go with Zoe Depth Anything. Outdoor resolution 960. The strength needs to be very low to avoid interference with instant ID. I'm using 0.5 and I'm also stopping the influence at 30%. I think we can try. We also made an anti here. Anyway, now we have the style from the prompt, uh, the face features from instant ID and the body position from the control net. Okay, let's start back from a default workflow for the last example. What if I want two characters in the same scene? Well, we can combine two instant ID nodes. It's a bit hacky, but it's doable. I need another instant ID and I connect the two together. Then I need a new reference image. I'm taking this guy and a picture for the head position. The woman will be on the left, so I connect the pose to the first instant ID node. And for the guy, I can just flip the pose image and send it to the second instant ID. Now we need to mask the two areas. I create a black solid mask, 1152 by 896. That is a resolution I know compatible with SDXL. I am setting the latent to the same size. Then I need a second solid mask, this time white, half the horizontal size. Then I combine the two. This one goes to the first instant ID, then I invert it and send to the second. We are almost there. All left to do is to connect the two conditioning. For that, I use conditioning combine. I need two, one for the negative and one for the positive, and we can finally go to the K sampler. Okay, the scene is a bit messy, but we have our two characters. Uh, let me try to add more context in the prompt. City skyline in the background. And now it's a bit better. Of course, you can have dedicated prompt for each character to fine tune the composition. I'm duplicating the positive prompt and for the guy I'll use 80s cyberpunk anime character. Remember that the model has to be trained for a specific style, so you might need to try a few checkpoints to get to a desired result. Okay, at the moment the background is defined inside each character's prompt, so it will take two different styles. To have something more coherent, we can create a third conditioning just for the background. So first of all, I remove the city from the two prompts, then I copy the final image and use it as reference to create the two masks for the characters. Then I merge the masks with mask composite, invert uh, the result, and this will be our background mask. Now I need a new text prompt where I write a comic book jungle, detailed, vivid colors, connect it to a conditioning set mask node, set the cond to mask bounds, and connect the mask. To merge everything together, I use a conditioning combined node, connect it to the character's positive prompt, and finally to the case sampler. I think we are ready to try it. We have a lot of conditioning now, so I'm also adding a rescale CFG node with a low multiplier, like 0.5, and try again. Okay, much better now. I can try a few more generations to see if I can get better hands. Ah, this is nice. Okay, if you are still watching, you deserve to know about the Instant ID Advanced node. Instant ID has two components. One is the attention patched with the IP adapter embeddings. The other is the control nets that takes the text prompt and merge it with the inside face embeds. And those are specially applied only on the key points. The IP adapter embeds are lighter, they participate to the composition by about 25%, the control net takes care of the rest. With the advanced node, you have the option to fine-tune the two components individually. The IP weight is for the IP adapter embeds, the CN strength is for the control net. It's not easy to explain how they impact the generation, 
but as a rule of thumb, you may want to lower the IP weight a little to have the generation follow closely your prompt, while the control net can stay pretty high. As always, you need to experiment. Okay, I think we can wrap this up. The extension is still in its infancy and it will likely change in the future, but it works pretty well and I think it is an interesting tool to keep in your arsenal. Okay guys, it's all for today. See you next time. Ciao.